If fast, high volume production and an automated unmanned operation is what you're interested in, Okuma has got the platform for you. Hi, I'm Wade Anderson. I'm the product specialist manager for Okuma America. And today joining me, I've got Chris Davala, principal application engineer for Okuma America. Chris, let's spend a few minutes and tell me about the inner workings of the twin spindle horizontal lathe. Sure, so it's two independent spindles horizontally facing you. Even though it's two spindles that you can operate with two completely separate NC programs, we do it with one control. So only one place to go to make all your adjustments, create all your programs, all that sort of thing. Our turrets sit off to the side and move towards the spindle. Spindles are stationary. There's a, a very steep angle of all the sheet metal inside to keep the chips flowing down to the conveyor that's located right below the spindles. Chip evacuation exactly. is huge in an automated sure. environment. Automation, you have to control your chips. So right. we can't have chips wrapped around the spindle. We can't have them packed up inside all the sheet metal inside because we want to run this thing essentially lights out, no operator standing in front of it for as long as we possibly can to allow your company to make the most money with the least amount of intervention from an operator. So you talked a little bit about it's two machines, basically two spindles running on one control. Tell us a little bit about the divider. So we can run this as one machine or two machines? Sure. So. Each spindle can run an OP10 part and unload separately. You can run an OP10, run an OP20. They can make two completely separate parts. It doesn't really make any difference. The divider in the center basically protects one side from the other. So as you're cutting here, it's not slinging chips to the other side. It also allows the operator to come in, swing this divider out of the way and get in there to set up his tools, work on his part, check some dimensions. It's a very tight space in there because it's a very small footprint. So in order for you to get in there and actually do some work, sometimes you need that little bit extra space. So this just allows you to have that. Fantastic. Now, this machine is a very small footprint. So we've got a lot of work taking place in a small amount of real sure. estate. Talk a little bit about the speed. Sure, so this particular machine, we can go up to about 6,000 RPM. So for, for most parts, that's a pretty, pretty fair amount of RPM for a small part size. We can hold up to 150 millimeters in this particular machine, which is about six inches. Some of our larger machines can, uh, can get over 11 inches in part size. So depending on the size of your machine, the size of your gantry, we have a wide variety of parts that we can accommodate to suit just about anything you need to do. The turrets themselves will index less than 0.2 of a second. That's right. The turret index from station to station is under 2 tenths of a second. Uh, this particular machine tool is turning only, so it's just lathe functionality. We do offer this with milling functionality as well. So an M spindle, which would be an integral spindle to the turret. So if you had any milling operations, say you want to drill some cross holes, maybe right. drill and tap a hole in the face, things like that, you can easily do so. Okay. Now you talked a little bit about operating from OP10, OP20, or they could be running both OP10. Sure. A lot of that is configurable by the gantry itself. So as we kind of back out from the machine, we talk about the automation piece of it. This is a very flexible automation device. We call it an Akuma gantry loader. Yep. So we can offer this with one arm or two arms. Right. So we could have one arm loading both spindles or we could have one arm dedicated to one side or the other. The workflow itself is adjustable. We could have raw material starting here, dropping off finished goods here, Absolutely. or both could be running raw and finished material depending on what your production needs That's are. Right. Tell us a little bit about the turnover station itself. So the turnover station is what will help pass parts from one spindle to the other. So as you mentioned, in this particular case, we're starting on the right side and the workflow goes from right to left. So we'll take raw stock. We will load it in this spindle. The gantry arm itself has two grippers. So we'll load a raw piece, take out a finished piece from here. These turnover stations will then face each other, face each other. and yeah. go off from the other one. Then the robot arm can take this part and load it in the chuck over on this side. If there's a finished part in here, it'll take it out, put that over here on our finished stalker, and that's basically how it works. If we wanna to switch to workflow, we can do the exact same thing going the other direction. So no matter where this is in your building, if your workflow is moving one direction or the other inside your building, uh, it's perfectly flexible for that. All right. One of the things I like about this type of automation is its simplicity. It's a very easy type of a system to be able to set up and operate. So as we look at the stalker tables itself, the standard configuration is offered with 16 stations for stockers. It's easily adjustable just by adjusting these plates in the bottom. By turning the plates, it adjusts the, the diameter of the parts that would be going into it. We have proc switches on the side that tells the gantry where the parts are. So anytime it picks up a part and goes to load the machine, it will automatically feed up until those proc switches are made and it knows there's a part ready for the next operation. So it's a very simple system to operate 
as well as set up for new jobs. Tell us a little bit about the programming side of it. Sure, so with a typical robot application or automation application, you would think you need to be a PLC programmer to, to drive this. But in our case, we drive everything right on the OSP control. One source. One source, exactly. So there's a teach pendant where we teach points for pick up and drop off of our parts, where they're gonna go. It's essentially a G-code driven program with a bunch of subroutines really. So if you can read a G-code program, you can easily understand how this loader program works. So you don't need to be a PLC or a robot programmer to do this. This particular case, we have an OSP control. We also offer this with a FANUC, if that's uh, the flavor really that you point. really need. Yep. Everybody is pretty much synonymous Okuma with the OSP control, but we do offer this with the OSP and the FANUC option as well. Absolutely, and since we do it all with one source, our teach pendant right there drives all the robot arm stuff. We have basically two separate sets of controls for the left and right side of the machine tool. So you can make any tweaks or adjustments on either spindle independently without having any switchover really to do. Excellent. So anytime we're working in an automated environment, you already mentioned one, we got to have chip control. We have to be able to control the chips, get chips out of the work area. This machine's designed specifically to get chips out of the work environment, yep. but also thermal stability. Sure. So without thermal stability, um, you have a hard time maintaining production Absolutely. and your tolerance and precision over time. Tell us a little bit about TAS and the thermo-friendly concept. So our thermo-friendly concept, these machines are built and manufactured so we understand how they grow as they heat up, right? So everything that we can, we isolate from the casting. So electrical cabinets, coolant tanks, things that generate heat, we try and isolate from the casting. Everything else, we have sensors that we measure and in the background, we're making minute adjustments so the operator doesn't need to chase offsets around all day. Excellent. We can easily predict how these machines will grow and at what rate they'll grow based on the thermal sensors and the ambient temperature. So all that lets us know how we need to make small adjustments in the background. You also mentioned flexibility. To jump back to the gantry for just a moment, we can also extend that beam out add another station. So if you wanted a third party gauging station, maybe some part marking, things like that. Uh, we also have some more flexibility there as well. That's a really good point. So we could actually take this stalker, move it over to the side, extend that beam, and then load wash stations, gauging sure. stations, things of that nature that could all be incorporated through Okuma and our distribution network. Absolutely. And if you put a gauging station, for instance, Say we have some auto gauging, checking our part sizes. We can tie that back to the control so we can make offsets adjust, offset adjustments without any operator intervention, just through some logic and uh, some applications on the OSP control. Perfect. Thank you for your time today on this virtual tour of the Twin Spindle Horizontal Gantry Loaded Lathe Series. Be sure to check out our other videos where you can learn more tips and tricks on the OSP control, custom applications that we've done, as well as other automated solutions available from Akuma America. Thank you.